congratulations on the show. Congratulations on all of the of the buzz and the nominations. I'm I'm really pulling for this show personally. Oh hey, all right. We we appreciate the support. I'll take it. Uh, so I'm curious if you can tell me about the start of this project. You know how you got involved in the and the role that you played in the early days. Yeah, um, I mean, Sunny and I have been friends for I think over six years now, um, and so honestly, to begin with, I mean, we would just talk about it because it was what he was working on, and you know, he showed me the pitch and the character graphs and the charts. He's very specific; it's very elaborate, beautiful pitches. Um, and we were sort of just talking about it as friends, and then just scheduling wise, it ended up in a place where he really needed some help, like figuring out the production and someone to come in, and I ended up being available, and so. Yeah, it was it was more just kind of friends getting together to, to work on something and then it ended up being a very, very special experience. Yeah, I mean I I wish that my gatherings with friends would be so productive. <laughs> but, <laughs> They're not um, all like that. It doesn't always seem <laughs> this was a lucky well, one. But. Um so you directed um six of the ten episodes, including a very uh, a run of very dramatic episodes in the second half. And so um I'm curious what were some of the the hardest parts of filming uh, in your experience? I think just, you know, Sunny writes these beautifully and, and the whole incredible writers room write these beautifully kind of specific scripts where there, there's a lot of drive and propulsiveness hidden under like really kind of observed character moments and just trying in a, in a show that we shot completely out of sequence. Like we didn't go episode by episode. We just shot it like one long movie really trying to keep track of those things and making sure that the filmmaking is supporting those those rises and falls as Sunny would refer to them as, and, you know, just kind of getting that stuff right and being really specific about character perspective and when to be grounded and whose perspective and when to break that or become more objective and making sure that that was actually enforced across an entire season as opposed to just responding to the moment. I think that that was probably the biggest challenge, but also the thing that was the greatest kind of opportunity about what Sunny had written and the thing that felt most exciting to direct. Yeah, I mean, character is really the main driver of the show, which was one of the things I thought made it so great. Um, but what was your approach, if any, you know, to, to building um, sort of momentum in that series of episodes, um, you know, climaxing on episode nine, of course? Yeah, I, I think most of that comes from the writing, you know, but we would talk about, you know, sort of how to keep the camera very grounded, like with our characters and how they felt and when it gets heightened, like how to sort of know that these heightened kind of elements of the show were coming and how to sort of thread that through some of the earlier episodes so that we're building up to something that won't feel like a total shock when it arrives. So that was kind of how we we talked about it and episode nine actually wasn't written when we started producing the shows. Nine and 10 hadn't been done yet, but we knew sort of what they were gonna be and we would talk about it and where we were headed and making sure that the panic room had been set up and that we were building to those things and knowing that even in a very kind of grounded show about real people in Los Angeles, knowing that it was gonna to go to that place where episode nine and 10 went meant making slightly different choices in our earlier episodes to make sure we could we were kind of accommodating that tonal range, you know, to know that we could end up there. That that's sort of how we we looked at it. Yeah. So so kind of building on that, you know, how did your approach to shooting these different relationships evolve as those relationships evolved? Like obviously Danny and Amy, um, but also, you know, relationships like Amy and George or Danny and Paul. Yeah, I think for that stuff, it's like, you know, we start in this place that's very simple, you know, the, the beginning, it's like, you're very much with, with Danny, you're very much with Amy. And then we would talk about like, there's a moment in episode two where Young and Steven are having a conversation in the bathroom and he's like, this is a bot. And he's like, you're a bot and he walks away. And then that moment is really the very first time that the camera walks back with Young, like with Paul's character. And it's the very first time that Paul sort of becomes a perspective character in the piece. And from then out, like the camera's allowed to kind of follow him a little bit more, but we would try, you know, Sunny is just as excited as I, as I am about these kind of ideas. So we would get pretty specific about who the camera could follow and how it could perceive things and how that would sort of subtly change your lens on, you know, who you were following and how you understood each of these characters throughout the season. That's really interesting. That's not something that I, I feel like I think that hard about, but it, it has a profound effect. It's one of those like, if it's working well, you don't even notice it type 
uh, type aspects. Yeah, the idea is not to be intrusive at all. You know, and I mean, I, hope, I wouldn't expect anyone to notice it. And who knows? Maybe we're maybe we're just telling ourselves it matters. But I think that that it there is a feeling you get from that. And you know, there was a lot of things we would do where in any given conversation, you know, traditionally you just sort of you balance the cameras, like you, you'll even measure it sometimes, like what the focal distance is on one side of the conversation and then you match that in the reverse and that makes for the most kind of seamless editing. But we would do a lot of unbalanced coverages where the camera is always closer to Amy or Danny within a scene, even if it's with Paul or you could decide, actually this is Paul's scene and you could balance it that way. But like really trying to kind of have this subtle underpinning and sense of purpose or, you know, I, I think the other thing that's so beautiful about the show that we realized is that there's so many hidden layers to it and that a scene almost doesn't work unless one character in the scene is lying, uh, sometimes to themselves, not necessarily to the other person. And so in order to do that, like you really have to pick your moments to be close to those characters and see that there's a beautiful moment of Stevens in episode seven when he comes home and he's just seen Amy, but he has to lie to Paul about it. And we just stay with him at the fridge and the way Stephen is able to communicate that you know, is so nuanced and so small that you really have to, like, I think with Sonny's scripts, what you learn is so much of what's happening is really kind of in between the lines a lot of the time. So like the moments you're looking for are the interior decisions that they're making about what to say and how to play it. And that that really necessitates a different perspective on how to shoot a scene than, than you might traditionally think. Right. So that, that kind of um, between the lines work, uh, you know, of course, would involve a lot of collaboration between the directing and the, the actors. So I'm wondering if there were any sort of maybe su delightfully surprising moments to say on set that, that you might remember fondly that, that you'd be okay with sharing. Yeah, I mean, it's such a collaboration and, you know, with with actors like that, you know, especially Steven, like Steven would just won't do anything false. Like he'll let you know, it's like, I just don't, I can't. I am Danny and I cannot do that. And, and, and I think you always have to listen to those things because there's something in it, you know, like you might be looking at it from an overall story perspective, but they're really coming at it from the perspective of character. And I, and that actually was a scene that Sonny has talked about where the initial way it was structured, like just didn't quite make sense to Steven on a character level. And he and Sonny really went back and reworked it and we came back and got that scene right. There were other ones where like, I think in the garage when Steven yells like, what you did was not nice. It's not nice to do that. You know, and like that isn't at all how I saw that line playing out when I read it. And there's a funny read that's much more low key that, you know, but just, I think that marriage of like, when there's like real purpose in the writing and you have a plan as a director and there's purpose in the camera and what it's doing, but then also still leaves enough room for the actors to bring something that you never expected. And so you're in the right place to capture that but it doesn't feel like the whole thing is mannered and just kind of according to the, the blueprint that was set up. I think those are the most special moments in filmmaking. So if you can get all of those things to line up and it takes actors as good as we had, I mean, just had such an incredible craft cast all across the board in this show that, that when you get a few of those, yeah, it's a very fun moment set. I love that scene. <laughs> um, now the, this series is a, a series of escalating events and, um, tragedies and it, there's a lot I feel like there's a there's a sense of tragedy that runs throughout the whole thing and I'm wondering what you think is the biggest tragedy of the show so far the biggest tragedy of the show so far I think that's so funny I hadn't really thought of it that way I guess because I knew where it was going and I know you know the way and Sonny both wrote and directed such a beautiful last episode I think I just knew that it wasn't going to end there. And that even in some of the sort of tragedy that happens in episode 10, you know, Sonny is not in the end, like he's not a cynical writer and he's not a cynical artist and he really does believe in the sense of connection and, uh, and sort of love and beauty and, and know it. So in a, in a weird way, it's like, yes, there's a lot of sort of um, kind of technically bad events that happen in the show, but I don't think that we ever looked at it that way on the inside. Like it didn't feel like a bleak show or, a, you know, so there always was the sense knowing that that's where it's headed again, just like knowing you need to set up episode nine, knowing what episode 10 is, what you're really looking for is just like those kind of, those moments almost of heart in between that, because in the end, that's, that's how the show is going to 
survive. You know, like that's not where it's not headed for this sort of tragic place in a way, even if they end up in what, you know, if you were to list it on a, in a news story or in, you know, in an obituary, it might read like that. But I think I just, just knowing Sonny so well, like that's not what he was after. And so we, I don't think we ever framed it that way for ourselves in thinking about it. That makes sense, especially with the, um, with the way that the series, uh, season one concludes, uh, there, there is a real sense of connection and, and hope that I certainly did not expect. <laughs> um, switching gears slightly, um, you have a lot of experience directing music videos as well. And so I'm wondering how that kind of experience might translate to a show like Beef, or if there were you know, tools in your arsenal that you, that you pulled out for this. I think less on a, a kind of technical camera side and more in the sense of like, like when, when I make music videos, which I, I do pretty sparingly these days, like I'll only really do it with an artist. Like I was, I, I was in music for a while and was in a band and so I know some artists do that. And the ones that I'll make are when it's like, I happen to know someone and I know that they're willing to, you know, talk to me for a few months about what a good idea would be. And, and, and also really bring, again, bring themselves to the project. Cause like in the end, I think like as a fan, when you watch a music video, you know, when I was young, I didn't know about music video directors. I just wanted to see like what band, you know, if I was into a band, like what video were they going to make for me? I want to feel like it was them presenting that to me. And so I think I look at my job in that world as like really trying to form these connections and almost kind of cinematically translate their ideas and make something that feels like they made it for their fans, you know, or that they made it and it feels like as much them as it does me. And so I think like in a, in a situation like Beef where, you know, the show is so personal to so many people involved with it. And if you're directing a scene in Korean church, which I have zero, you know, personal historical connection to, you really have to leave that room and you really have to trust the people that you're collaborating with and, you know, hope that they bring enough of themselves to it. And then, yeah, again, I look at my job, it's like, I do think, uh, you know, I try to have an ability to like kind of be able to translate that cinematically or help shape it or capture it in some way, but, I, but it requires, like if I were dictating that it would never work and it wouldn't work in music videos either. And so that's kind of the thing I tried to take most from that world. Right. Makes sense. Um, were there any any needle drops of yours that, uh, or of the uh, of the show that you kind of enjoy the most? I mean, the Bjork one is great. I mean, they're not, you know, almost every needle drop was written into these scripts by Sunny from the beginning. I think I maybe snuck Machine Head in there for the basketball sequence, which was fun for 14 year old Jake was, was very excited about that one. Um, yeah, I just thought it was such a cool, you know, Sonny talked about how he wanted, you know, like when you watch Sopranos, it's all the 70s music, which is really just what David Chase was listening to as he grew up and that Sonny wanted this to feel like that. And that, yeah, it just gives it this kind of odd sense of nostalgia, you know, or if there is this kind of like more innocent or childhood place that they're going back to in the end, you know, like I feel like the music in a strange way without announcing that or being overt about it kind of hints that that's in there, you know, that, that there's a sort of longing for something in, in Danny and Amy that, that they don't have in their current life. And yeah, and also, I mean, yeah, the Hoobastank one. I remember the first day that Sonny and Harry played that for me in the editing room and I just like, couldn't stop laughing. I was like, yeah, all right, I get it, I get it. Oh my God, that was actually my reaction too. That, and then that was the moment where I was like, I was like, this is gonna be, like this show is gonna be special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so of course, it, a show like this involves um, a lot of hard decisions about what to include, what not to include. Is was there anything kind of left on the cutting room floor that you that you're allowed to share and that you were perhaps sad to say goodbye to? No, not really. I don't even know. I don't know that we lost that much. I mean, the, the I feel like you're kind of watching like what we. I mean, you know, there's shots here and there for sure, but I mean, I'm, I'm probably forgetting something that Sonny would remind me of, but I think predominantly, he, you know, with a few little exceptions, there's no like, ah, oh, that was crazy, but it just didn't belong or we had like, like most of like, we needed all the time we had to shoot all of it and we needed all of it to make the show that we made. So yeah, you're it's pretty much all in there. And that, I, I feel like that honestly speaks volumes that it was like so tightly written that there isn't a lot of like, oh, we were trying stuff out, it didn't work out. 
yeah, no, I mean, it really, the scripts were just so intricate and interesting. And like, again, even if it isn't always obvious or it isn't always external stakes, they are always really tightly wound and driving towards something. And I think as a director, that's all you can ask for. It's just that there's just such a sense of purpose to each of those scenes and you know what they're going after and you know what they're about. And then that tells you how you should direct them. And that's such a nice thing to have. Um, do you think that you expected the show to kind of blow up to this extent? Like I've, I've spoken with a couple other people who have been involved in the production in, in some way. And they're always like, we knew we had something special, but didn't necessarily expect the extent. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, not that I thought it wouldn't. I just didn't. I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't. I think, especially when you're in it, and also like I came on like right at the beginning of production and it was just a scramble to even make it achievable. And so you're just in the thick of it and you do know that there's something special. And I, you know, I think for me, maybe what's so kind of the nicest thing about the show is that, you know, I've been friends with Sonny for years and I've known what a kind of special thinker he is. And he has a ton of really, really interesting different ideas. And so I was happy just to see him get to make one. I mean, and to get to help was great, but then to also have it connect with so many people when he didn't compromise the idea. He didn't, you know, it really is like this very special thing. And this idea he had and to, and to see that connect with so many people, like I think just as a friend, there's something really lovely about getting to watch that happen. But I can't say I predicted it. And Sonny will tell you that too, because I think he did and, uh, you know, it's like you're not you allowed think to you predicted. Faith this. Uh, no, I think Sonny has a real sense of faith that like, or had a sense of faith that if we made this right, that it was something that a lot of people would connect with. And I think, you know, you want your showrunner to have that, that faith, you know? And I think it's not that I doubted him. It's just that I think of the rest of us, so it's just heads down and just try to make that thing as good as we can. But I think it was really special to watch him be right about that. Um, so I'm wondering if I have time for one more question. And my last question is like probably yeah. my most unhinged question. <laughs> so All right, let's get, let's get unhinged. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so I, <laughs> I have a theory that uh, everyone needs at least one nemesis in their life. And that nemesis, <laughs> <laughs> it could be uh -oh. a person, but it could be a concept. Because a definition okay. of a nemesis is like, it's it could be a rival, but it's it's also, and I quote, an inescapable agent of someone's downfall. Okay. And right. I was just I was just thinking about that because of the show. Do you think that Amy and Danny could be considered nemeses in some way? Or perhaps their nemeses is, is some other concept? I'm you're gonna get me in so much trouble with this question, not because <laughs> uh I, I just I just don't, you know. I just can only picture Sunny watching my answer and be like, that's not what I would have said. That's not what I, but I, I think, uh, could they be considered nemeses based on your quote? I, I guess I would say, I mean, my inclination is to say no, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but only in the sense that I think that that downfall was in them, you know, and the suggestion is that like, they can't really sort of be whole or be honest with themselves and therefore with the people who they love about who they are until they've met each other and until they have this experience. And so again, kind of to your earlier question about viewing the show as a tragedy, which I just don't think that it is. And I think we knew that going in. So we never talked about it as like, this is about a downfall as much as in the end, it really is about this very important connection that I think the show suggests they needed, you know, and that's what's so beautiful and so different in that episode 10 and the way Sonny wrote it and the way he directed it is that maybe that isn't where you expected the show to go, but hopefully when it happens, we've done the work to support when you look back, like, oh, that's actually where this was going. And I think that's nice. It's nice to not really know where something's gonna end up. But so I guess to me, I don't, again, on an external level, I suppose you could certainly argue that they are the agents of each other's downfalls from a, you know, traditional societal perspective. But I think like my sense, and he can correct me if he wants, is that what Sonny is going after is the idea that they needed this in some way, that there's something very essential about where they end up that had to happen. Because otherwise, you know, we, we talked about in, in the car chase in episode nine, you know, approaching that, the show has been so grounded in character perspective up until that point. We talked about wanting to do that chase in a different way, 
where we finally have like a high angle and then Sunny introduces a lot of high angles in episode 10 that feel more like objective God perspective. And that this idea that these two people are locked in a cycle and if something doesn't break, they will go on in this cycle forever. Like we are no longer just in Danny's car chasing a white SUV. Like we were seeing the two of them and we were seeing them wide and in slow motion and this will never end if something doesn't break. And so if that's true, then it's not a tragedy for them to have met or for it to happen because that was in them and something needed to shift within their lives. And I think you see the hints of that from the very earliest points in the show. And so I think, anyway, unhinged question, unhinged answer, I guess, but my sense would be, I guess on, on the short side, technically, no.